Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. Here's Mr. Clinton. He, you know, he's an angry Clinton. Today, I managed to make my way through way more of this workout than usual. Usually by the time I get to the part where he starts doing this mountain climbers thing, I feel like I'm about to die and I'm only able to get three, max eight, because I'm tired from the previous. Today, not only did I not have to do any rest, usually I have to rest to be able to do eight. Today, I, got, I did 22 of this, with no rest from the prior workout and before I felt like I was about to die. So sh slowly but surely, I'm going to be able to do this entire thing in one sitting without feeling like I'm about to die. Honestly, even if I do feel like I'm about to die, I don't care. I want to be able to get through this whole thing uh, just like that. So usually right now my workout routine is uh, weightlifting, day off, weightlifting, day off, weightlifting, day off. Now it's uh, weight, you know, I have a day of um, squats, bench press, bent over rows, curls, skull crushers. Next day, this. Day after that, deadlifts. Shoulder press, bent over rows, curl skull crushers. Next day, cardio. Next day, weights, and so on and so forth. And uh, th this thing is kicking my ass, but th by in one year's time, I will get through this entire thing without passing out on the floor. And the progress that I made today made me very excited. So today what I'd like to discuss is a topic relating to customer service in the service industry or in the repair business. On the repair wiki that I put together, I have all different types of information on how to troubleshoot and repair a lot of different products. This is targeted at all people, whether you run a repair shop or whether you just want to fix stuff in your apartment. And what I'd like to do today is go over some topics in customer service. I used to have a business talk playlist on this channel where I would talk about this stuff. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to share some stuff from my own employee manual that I have, and maybe it'll help you out if you're starting out your own business. So this has to do with customer service. We have a scenario here, and it's a scenario that many people get wrong in this business. And I want to ex just explain the scenario, explain what was done wrong, and what you should do. Let's hypothetically say that somebody walks into your store or calls you up and says, my laptop is overheating. Can you fix it? And you, you know, you turn the laptop on, you see that it is running at 68 Celsius at idle, and you think that's a little high. So you say, sure, it'll be 50 bucks to do a full cleaning. So you take the machine in, you take everything out of the computer, you go outside with a little air compressor, you blow it out at 50 PSI so that there's no more dust anywhere in the computer, not hiding under the board or anything or in the fans. You change the thermal paste, because you took the board out to change the thermal paste and everything like that. And now it's running at 47 Celsius at idle rather than 69 or 68. So you think, oh, I did what I was supposed to do. It's running 20 Celsius cooler. You give it back to them. They are happy. They pay you. And the next day, they file a charge back with your bank. They uh, have a complaint lodged with the Department of Consumer Affairs. And you have a one-star review on Yelp, Google, and Facebook. I got scammed. I did everything that they asked. Why'd they do that? You actually are the one that did something wrong here. You, the shop owner, did something wrong. You committed one of the cardinal sins in service industry customer service. You did what somebody asked you to do rather than doing what they needed. One of the worst things that you can do in customer service is actually do what somebody asks you uh, just point blank without digging into their issue at all. You should understand why you're doing what you're doing rather than that. So let's just kind of rewind and go back to the, what happened with the customer prior to them bringing this device to you that they asked you to fix their overheating problem on. They probably had their machine randomly crashing. So let's say it's crashing and it's turning off on them for no reason. So they Google and they see the first result when they go, why is my computer crashing? That it's overheating. Rather than asking you to fix the issue of it randomly crashing, what they asked of you was to fix the issue of it overheating because they thought that's the problem. So since you did not dig into it to figure out why, it, why do they want you to fix the overheating issue, you fixed something unrelated to their problem. Now, many times crashing can be caused by overheating, but also a lot of the times random crashing can be caused by corrosion on the motherboard because liquid got on it. It could be caused by a dying CPU. It could be caused by a dying GPU. It could be caused because, I don't know, C9560 in your A202850 has gone bad or C7771 in your A202330 has gone bad. There, It can be caused because U8900 solder joints are slowly kind of separating from the board because the board bends in that area and Apple had crappy design that year. There are many things that can cause something to randomly crash. Overheating is only one of them. So when you do what the customer asks you to do without understanding or trying to learn why they're asking you to do that, you may fix something that's not their problem. The customer is not paying for you to fix their overheating problem. The customer is paying you to fix their actual problem, which they are not always able to communicate to you. 
I do the exact same thing. I, do, I just really recently noticed the other day, I was going to ask a bike technician to adjust the rear derailleur on my bike because every now and then it's skipping gears. Now, there are many reasons it could be skipping gears. It could be skipping gears because uh, the little thingy that the... Um, uh, the, the little, uh, there's a little thingy that the derailleur can attach to that can start to slowly uh, come unscrewed or come off. My rear cassette could be bad. My front chain ring could be skipping. My chain could be bad because it's old. There are so many things that could cause this to occur. And I'm telling him to do this one thing because I think it's going to fix the problem. What I actually should be telling the bike technician is every now and then when I get up to this gear range, it will skip. And I don't know why. Can you figure out what that is and then write me up a bill for it? But that's not how most consumers think. They, they try to immediately figure out, okay, what's wrong, and then tell somebody else, I want you to fix this specific thing that I think is wrong. And that's going to get you one-star reviews, chargebacks, and complaints with the Department of Consumer Affairs. And many people will think that this is unfair. They will think that they are being treated poorly. But at the end of the day, it is your responsibility to make the customer happy. One of the things that I've made as a goal at my business is it is not my goal to do what you tell me to do. It is my goal that you leave happy, which is why there are certain customers that we will reject because if I believe that regardless of what I do, you will never be made happy because I just got some sinking feeling or intuition that there's nothing I could do that will make you happy, then I just try to send you somewhere else. Usually I'll, I'll, I'll give them Sonny's business card or something. But in all seriousness, your job in the service industry is that the person walking away be happy, be better off as a result of having given you money. Not that you simply do exactly what they asked. If you are looking to do exactly what they asked, if you think we have a contract, you said it's overheating, I fixed the overheating issue, we're good, the contract says it's what I'm going to do, many people are going to say you should have a contract. At the end of the day, you could have contracts all day long, but if nobody is happy as a result of having went to your business, who gives a fuck what it says in the contract? What matters is that they're going to tell everybody they know, I feel like I got ripped off. And what matters at the end of the day in the service industry are people's feelings. Do they feel like they had a good experience with you? Do they feel like they're better off as a result of having given you money? Or do they feel like you technically did what you were supposed to do, but you didn't fix their problem and you took their money? Now, from your point of view, you may think as a beginner, again, I, you know, I did everything I was supposed to do. If you're solely talking about this contract, then technically, yes, you did. If you're talking about being a good business in the service industry, then no, you didn't. You should always be seeking to understand why somebody is asking you to do what they are asking you to do, rather than simply doing what they're asking you to do. If they're asking you to do a cleaning, why? If they're asking you to replace a part, why? If they say, I'm having this problem, what led up to this problem? Tell me more. Tell me more is a phrase that you should be using with your customers on a regular basis so that you can gain a full understanding of what is going on. This is also going to establish whether or not you have a trust issue with this person to begin with. Because if somebody says, I want you to fix the overheating problem, and you say, okay, just so you know, I can do that, but on this machine, very often randomly crashing is a motherboard-related issue. Do you want me to, over, to fix the overheating problem because it gets hot in your lap? Or do you want me to fix this because it's, it's kind of randomly crashing on you? And they go, well, you know, now that you think of it, Premiere has been crashing all the time. Yeah, Premiere crashes all the time anyway. It's a shitty program. What else is crashing? Well, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll have Chrome crash on me and sometimes the screen will just go black. Well, I can fix the overheating thing no, just fine. Just so you know, it's still probably going to do that because this model has an issue where the power chip that powers the graphics card in the computer, that's kind of like the brain for creating everything on your screen, it, it doesn't supply the amount of power that it needs to as it gets older. So I can fix your overheating problem, but there's a good chance that it's still going to do that. Do you want me to look into whether or not there's another issue or just do this? And they go, no, I'm pretty sure it's just the overheating. You have a red flag there. You know that this person doesn't trust you, which means they're likely to be a problem, which means you give them Sonny's business card. But if they go, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm, uh, can you look into whether there's something else with it? And you're not going to charge me before you tell me what it is, right? No, sure. I'll just, I'll just open it up, see if that's the problem, and I'll let you know what it's going to cost to fix. Yeah, sure, go for it. That customer now... Now I know that this customer actually trusts me. So asking for history and then giving them context as to why something is doing what it's doing is not only going to mean that you're less likely to uh, ha do something to their device that's not going to fix their problem. Not only do you learn more about the device so you know better how to fix the problem, but it's also going to weed out the people that you need to give, uh, I hate admitting that I do this, but I do, give Sonny's business card to because they're just going to be miserable pricks that are going to make your life hell because they don't trust you. And you're going to figure out that they don't trust you. And if they don't trust you, you cannot have a relationship. So hopefully this kind of helps you out. There are a number of pages that I give to new people that are doing customer service so that they can get a better idea of how to deal with many of these sticky and difficult 
difficult situations. Again, you can have whatever you want written on a contract. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if the person is not happy. It doesn't matter if you go to court or anything like that. Because uh, again, and, and the court says in your well, technically you said you fixed the overheating and you did it. Because at the end of the day, by the time you're going to court, you've already lost because you have somebody out there that's telling every single fucking person they know never use this place because they feel like they got screwed. And you may think it's unfair. And you have to take accountability and responsibility for the feelings of your customers. But if you want to be successful, if you want to have a decent reputation, you do. Get as much information as you can from everybody who walks in anytime they ask you to do something, especially if they ask you to do a specific thing rather than fix a specific problem. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, Mr. Clinton hopes that you learned something. Good, Clinton. What do you think of customers that file chargebacks, Mr. Clinton? I know. They're mean. That's not very polite. You should always cover your mouth if you yawn like that. Clinton? 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 He broke my other microphone. That's why I'm using this Audio Technica AE5400. He liked to knock at it and like keep hitting it until it would fall out of its mount. And he would always mess with it. Little bastard. I tried to fix my Audio Technica 4050. No luck. No luck. Rest in peace. This thing is supposed to use the same capsule. I don't know if it uses inferior electronics or if it's because the body is shaped differently. It just doesn't sound the same as the Audio Technica 4050, even if it does use the same capsule. Maybe it's placebo, or maybe I've just set it up wrong, but I miss my Audio Technica 4050. It was a nice microphone. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.